Hello everybody, this is our first video in our ninth grade biology class. And the first unit we're covering is ecology. And I think you all have some idea of what ecology is. But we're going to develop that into a little bit more precise definition today. Loosely speaking, we can say it's the study of the relationship between organisms and their environment. It comes from the Greek words oikos for house, which we now pronounces eco, and logi for word or study of, so the study of the house, literally the study of the house of the earth. The first thing I want you to do is take a look at these three photos of forests, and as you're looking at them, and I'll give you several chances to do so, can you see similarities? What similarities do you see? And do you see differences, aside from this one's taken from far away and the first two were taken from within? Can you see similarities between forest number one, forest number two, and forest number three? And this one is in autumn, clearly. And can you see differences in these forests? One, two, and three. So let me tell you what you were looking at. All of these are oak forests. They are all dominated by trees in the genus Quercus, which is the genus of oaks. And the amazing thing is that these oak forests occur in Washington, D.C. That was the first one. In Scotland, the second one. And in China, the third one, the one you're looking at here. Even though these forests are all oak forests, they have different species of oaks in them. And ecologists try to account for both the similarities and the differences in these forests. If we were to run around and look at lots of different ecosystems, we would immediately notice a lot of similarities. Just as the forests were similar, so too can we find similarities between grasslands all over the world, between deserts all over the world, rainforests, coral reefs in different parts of the world all have similarities. When you look at any of these places, the first thing you find is that the organisms are all interacting with each other. They are not independent organisms. They're living their lives connected to each other. And one of the things we want to start to think about is, what are these connections? How are these connections made? And how do they affect the organisms? That is the study of ecology. For example, some organisms eat other organisms. Some compete with other organisms. Some provide habitat for others. Some change the physical space around them. Some capture energy from inanimate sources and make it into living energy. As a result, we call these assemblages of species systems because these species all interact and depend on each other. Specifically, the systems are referred to as ecosystems. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about systems thinking and what a system is. If you want to talk about that, you can take my advanced environmental science course where we spend a good portion of the year talking about systems. So this is what an ecosystem is, an assemblage of interacting species. Now, when we look at nature and ecosystems, we find many patterns, many repeated patterns. For example, all deserts have certain things in common with each other. For example, the plants have adaptations to conserve water, which makes a lot of sense. If you're in an area where water is scarce, over time, you might evolve to have water conservation mechanisms. Rainforests on the five different continents on which they occur have similar structure from the ground to the canopy. They have different species, but their structure has come to be the same in these different parts of the world. The roles that organisms play in similar ecosystems, and actually even in different ecosystems, are often very similar, even though the species are different and unrelated to each other, and they're separated by thousands of miles. So these kinds of patterns, we see that they're repeated over the earth, and it gives us a sense that there must be some underlying order to ecosystems. And ecologists are the people tasked with finding the cause of these patterns. So what does an ecologist do? Well, 
since ecosystems are assemblages of species that live in an area and coexist over time, ecologists ask questions about ecosystems like, how do these systems function year after year to maintain themselves? Or do they change over time? And if so, how do these systems work? What occurs within the system to allow it to continue functioning? Why do the organisms coexist and not drive each other out? Other types of questions that ecologists might ask are, what species, what organisms, the individual species occur within the ecosystem? And then they might say, well, what is a particular species or each species within the ecosystem do? And then they might do an experiment like remove a species from the ecosystem to see what happens when it's removed, or remove several, or add species to an ecosystem to see how the system operates. But you can see there's both system level and down to the individual level study. Other questions an ecologist might ask is, how do e ecosystems interact with the non-living, the so-called physical environment? How do they change it? How does the non-living environment affect the living species? These are all the types of questions that ecologists answer. And they can get very, very specific to being very, very broad. So ecology has the largest scale in all of biology. It considers the entire Earth as a system and then looks at the subsystems, the ecosystems that occur around the Earth. So it is a big picture subject. And it is important while you're learning the details of ecology to always keep the big picture in mind. In the rest of the unit, we will look at a set of general rules about ecology. I just want you to know I made these rules up. A couple of years ago, I started to think, what did I want you to know? And I came up with 15 rules originally. I think it's now expanded to 19. Who knows? Maybe this year I'll add a 20th. We'll see when we get to the end of the unit. Students are often frustrated with these rules because unlike in physics and chemistry where the rules are very well defined, in biology the rules are much fuzzier and much less exact. And that's because biological systems and ecosystems are historical. They have a history and history is important. And they involve organisms that have agency, organisms that can make choices. So when we see an ecosystem in the present right now, we see it as the result of historical contingencies, freak events, forest fires, storms, meteors hitting the planet, global warming, global cooling, glaciers, continents moving. Those are historical contingencies. And we also see it as a response by organisms in evolutionary time, but also in real time. And these organisms are making choices, some of which are good and some of which are bad, just like you and I. So, the rules in biology are not as exact as they are in other science, but still they're fascinating and they have a lot of explanatory power. Before we move on to the rules, it's important to come up with a formal definition of ecology. So here it is. I got this one from the British Ecological Society and I modified it a little bit, I got to admit. And ecology is the scientific study of the distribution the abundance and dynamics, which is the change over time of organisms, as well as their interactions with their physical environment and with their living environment, in other words, with other organisms. The study of the distribution, where they occur, the abundance, how many they are, the dynamics, the change over time of organisms, as well as their interactions with their physical and living environment. So now we're going to go on to the rules of ecology, and that will be the subject of video number two. Until then, have a great time thinking about biology, thinking about ecology, and getting out in the field and looking for organisms.